for what though? I complied. I put it on after they asked me to. Isn't it procedure? Isn't it policy that he can wear his mask? He can take off his mask. Here you go. Say that again. He put his mask on. He took it off when he started eating the nuts. That was it. I was sitting right here. So. It's not a publicity It's not a publicity stunt. It's trying to make you follow policy indiscriminately and and impartially. Okay. So. Do you follow your policy indiscriminately and impartially, or do you just do this for people whose message you don't like? All right, we're doing something on the fly today. Uh, late last night, I was scanning Twitter. Why am I scanning Twitter? I don't know, but I was scanning Twitter, and I saw a video that started going viral of a young black man who was on a Southwest flight and being kicked off the flight. Uh, and it seemed to have something to do with the fact that he was wearing a Trump 2020 mask and he had a Black Voices for Trump hat. And there was a supervisor from Southwest kicking him off the plane. There was a woman narrating it and a couple other people that got involved. It didn't sound like he did anything wrong because you obviously are allowed to take your mask down when you're, when you're eating or drinking. Uh, thanks to the sleuths on the internet, we have been able to locate that guy, Philip Nadifon, and uh, his friend, his co-worker actually, uh, who filmed the whole thing, Chris Ann Hall. It turns out that Chris Ann Hall is a uh, constitutional expert and they were traveling the country teaching the Constitution and Philip was doing some video uh, work for her, so it's sort of a, a perfect fit on a couple fronts. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna play most of the two videos that went viral so that you can see the context of what happened. Uh, and I should just note that I did, before we play the interview, I did talk to them for a minute or two before, and I have assurances from them that nothing happened outside of the video that would uh, imply that they were trying to get publicity or that this was staged or anything else. So we're gonna play the viral videos and then we're gonna go into my interview with Philip and Chris Ann Hall, and I just wanna say one other thing, which is that the reason that I wanted to do this is that this is a, a young black man who was just kicked off a flight, in effect, for no reason. And we certainly know that if he didn't have a Trump uh, mask or a Black Voices for Trump hat, that this is the type of, the, type of story, as he was kicked off by a white supervisor, that the media would love and this would be being played everywhere and this would be the head of CNN and celebrities and democratic politicians would be telling you this proves systemic racism and the rest of it. Uh, but because he is a Trump supporter, you're gonna see some clips of this on YouTube and you'll see some clips of it on Twitter, but it won't make it to mainstream. It just won't, mark my words. As I'm taping this right now, it's about 8 a.m. Uh, it's not even 8 a.m. Uh, here in Los Angeles, and I'm willing to take the risk that this thing is not going to be on MSNBC or CNN today unless we force the issue. So that's what I'm trying to do here because I think it's important. It's important to see because the people that will tell you that everything is racist seem to only see racism when it fits their narrative. Uh, so without further ado, here's the original viral video and then my interview with Philip and Chris Ann. Because of eating. Here's the they said if I'm actively eating, I'm not watching on this flight. So we're not allowed to eat with our masks off, is that what you're saying? Am I not allowed to have my mask off? You need to come off this aircraft, you're being denied. For what though? I complied. I put it on after they asked me to. Isn't it procedure? Isn't it policy that he can wear his mask? He can take off his mask? No, I'm sorry. I'm his legal counsel. Is it not your policy to, that he can wear him, take off his mask? I'm wearing the mask. I'm just eating. Right 
So you're just going on hearsay and violating Southwest policy then, right? Yeah. What am I supposed to do then? Can you tell us the policy that prevents him from taking his mask off while he's eating, please? I was not. I was not here. The president, the crew has denied. Okay, but you're seeing him with eating. So please tell me the policy. Tell the crew to tell me the policy that says he cannot eat with his mask off. It's the hat. It's the hat. It's the hat and the mask. It's not the eating. I fly three times a week. Denied boarding by the crew. The crew is not going so to what take what? Mm. I didn't do anything. I'll hang back with him. I'll go with him. What'd you say? I said I'll go with him. Yeah, but you got a little mask on that. I'll go with him. I'll go with him. Do you have anything in your overheads? Uh, so, can you clarify for us? Are we not allowed to take our masks off to eat on this plane? Can you please clarify, are we are not allowed to take our masks off to eat on this plane or not? Listen to the flight crew and follow their instructions. So, are you going to tell us that we can take our masks off to, to eat on the plane? He did cooperate. See, he did cooperate. Here you go. Say that again. He put his mask on. He took it off when he started eating the nuts. That was it. I was sitting right here. So... It's not a publicity, it's not a publicity stunt. stunt. It's, it's trying to make you follow policy indiscriminately and, and impartially. Okay? So, do you follow your policy indiscriminately and impartially, or do you just do this for people whose message you don't like? All right, and joining me right now are the two people in that video, the guy who dared to eat on an airplane, Philip Nadifan and the woman who filmed the whole thing, Chris Ann Hall. Guys, I expect you're going to have a bit of a crazy day. Thanks for joining me so early. Thank you. Thank you for having us on. Okay, so look, I don't want to fall into a trap here, and we all know how video can be edited and things could have happened uh, beforehand and everything. You guys, before we started, we talked for just 20 seconds. You guys gave me your word that, Philip, you were not doing anything you weren't supposed to be doing and all that. So before we do anything else, can you guys just tell me what flight you were on, why you were going somewhere, and how do you know each other? Let's just start off with the basics. We were flying from Tampa, Florida on Southwest Airlines. Our final destination was going to be Amarillo, but uh, we had a layover in Dallas. And I'm a constitutional attorney, which kind of helps us a little bit in this. And I'm a constitutional educator traveling around the country teaching the Constitution. So Philip and I were on our way to one of my constitutional training events in Oklahoma City. And Philip was coming to film the event. And we were there with my husband and my son. It's a whole team that we have to, to make this Constitution training happen. And there really isn't much more to the story than what you see on the video because we hadn't even pulled away from the gate yet. Okay, so Philip, you had, you dared to have a Trump 2020 mask. <laughs> and what, what were the exact words on your hat? Or you've got the hat there. Why don't you show people yeah, the hat I do have and the hat. mask, yeah. I have the hat, it was uh, Black Voices for Trump. I'm an African American just supporting the Trump administration. And then my Trump uh, mask, Trump 2020, make America great again. And that's that's basically all that singled me out, basically the, the, the whole flight. I mean, I mean, I mean, for the duration of the time that I was on the flight, yeah. there was no other reason for them to even point me out except the fact that I was supporting Black Voices for Trump or, you know, Trump 2020. Yeah, so did the flight attendant give you any warning before what we see in the video there? Did they tell you how you're supposed to eat? I mean, I know we've all got these crazy rules. What, what were right. you eating? What were you doing? Right, I was actually eating a bag of trail mix and uh, the and flight attendant and a cup of coffee as well. I even have a video of myself, you know, drinking the cup of coffee and then putting the mask back on as they required over the nose, which is the only warning that they even told me was to put the mask over the nose, not under the nose. So that was the only warning that I received from anybody. And the flight attendant himself was Hispanic, 
So, you know, I, I wasn't really expecting any, any drama or anything that was going to happen. And prior to that, nothing else led up to the fact that they were going to refuse my service, except the fact that I was, I had this mask on, I have this on, and I was just eating a bag of chum mix. Yeah, so when the flight attendant came up to you, did he immediately, right. is what we see in the video exactly what happened? I mean, did he immediately say you have to get off the plane? That was actually the supervisor. Right. So the flight attendant never came back. Uh, he just went and apparently went to get, uh, went and complained to the pilot. Right. The pilot called the supervisor. The supervisor is the one that you actually see on camera. Mm -hmm. And so the supervisor is telling him, uh, the flight attendant has told me you're refusing to wear right. your mask, you're refusing to comply with our policy, and you now have to leave the plane. And so the la even the lady in the video that I took, the lady behind us said, look, he's complying. He just took it off to eat. And there were other people on the plane who weren't wearing their masks that were eating. We, you can look around, you can even see it in the video. And, right. and the flight attendant said nothing to those people. Yeah, I mean, just from our couple minutes here, Philip, it's pretty obvious to me, this is not like some play for attention or, or anything, <laughs> and anything like that. Can you tell me a little bit, this is si sort of an offshoot, but can you just tell me a little bit about uh, why, you're, why you're supporting the president and, and what Black Voices for Trump means to you? I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with my show at all, but I've had a lot of people on that, that share right. that sentiment from the black community. And, and I think right. something really, really incredible is happening right now. I'm just curious right. your thoughts on that. Absolutely. And I mean, I, I grew up in a uh, multicultural home. My mom's originally from Pennsylvania. My dad's originally from Nigeria. So uh, as a you know, black American, I support President Trump because he is, obviously he's for pro-life, which I'm about. You know, he, he's doing more for the black community. I mean, that's the biggest problem that we're actually having in our inner cities, in our inner communities, is the, the, the death of, you know, unborn babies. There's the, you know, the, the job joblessness. And before the whole COVID, you know, thing transpired, we had the lowest unemployment rate that has that we've ever seen. I saw people getting jobs that I never even thought that would, you know, because, you know, I just didn't expect them to, you know, to really take on and are actually starting businesses. And then Trump also putting uh, in place the opportunity zones with uh, 100, $100 billion into the inner cities for opportunity zones to build the community. That kind of stuff is unprecedented. And I haven't seen it in my lifetime, a president that's undergo undergone such scrutiny for helping the black community and calling him a racist is kind of like, doesn't make sense to me because he's doing more for the black community than any president prior, even President Obama. Yeah, I'm guessing so. you've I'm guessing you've probably gotten a little hate for it, for the hat and the mask before, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, not always the most pleasant interactions, but I mean, you know what yeah. was interesting as Philip was we were walking through the Tampa airport. Philip had his mask and his hat on the whole time, and we got nothing but support people right. would come up to us Literally. and and talk to him and ask us what we were doing and why we were traveling and ask him about his hat and right it, it, it was the overwhelming popular support of the people it's just the the mainstream media seems to be bent on mm -hmm. creating a narrative to simply create a reality right. rather than simply describe the reality America is actually experiencing Right. Yeah, believe me, I hear you. I, I stumbled upon a Trump rally in L.A. of all places the other day. I just happened to be going down the street and there was a Trump rally. And guess what? There were black people, white people, gay people, straight people, Everybody. Latino people, and, and nobody right. cared. All right. So since you are a uh, constitutional lawyer, uh, I suspect there's going to be some some legal action <laughs> on the way. Am I am I mistaken? We're going to start off by writing a nice letter. Uh, we're going to give Southwest the opportunity uh, to do the right thing. I am, although I am a constitutional lawyer, I am not, uh, you know, I don't have a trigger finger, so I don't go around and, and sue everybody. I want everybody to have the opportunity to make things whole without entering into the field of litigation. I'd like to see an amicable relationship. Uh, I have personally been flying Southwest for ten, over 10 years. And for me, their customer service has been impeccable. 
And so I don't, I want to know as a customer that this is not the view you know, of Southwest, right. yeah. that this is just some flight attendant that got upset or triggered and is letting his own bias right. override his professionalism. So I want Southwest to have the opportunity to make us whole in that. Right. All right, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because I think, you know, people see these videos and they automatically think, oh, something must have happened right before or these guys are just trying to get into a lawsuit and, and it genuinely doesn't sound that way with you guys. Philip, you know, I find that there's moments over the last couple of years where I've interviewed somebody where it's like, oh, they're about to, to step into something much bigger if they want it. Do, if you were uh, introduced to Candace Owens and Brandon Tatum and Larry Elder and all those guys, do, do you right. want a, a louder voice in that Black Voices for Trump movement? Because uh, I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm all about the Constitution. That's why I'm actually traveling with, with Ms. Chris Hall. I'm about, you know, the values that America upholds, the freedom that we have here. So if, if there was any platform that I was ever introduced to do that, I would obviously take that only because I do believe that, you know, not just Trump and anybody that believes in this country and believes in freedom, I think that that, that should be voiced from every single person. So, yeah. All right. Well, let me uh, let me see what I could do. I, I might be able to <laughs> I might be able to make something happen there. All right. Well, I know you guys ha you guys have a hectic day of uh, teaching people about the Constitution, which is another thing dear to my heart. So I'm going to let you get to it. I thank you guys thank for you. taking the time this morning. And good luck with everything. And, you know, if, if you need to get the message out further, you know how to get me. Thanks, right. sir. Awesome. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.